The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Jesus Today we have the Magnificat. And of course, Mary went upon hearing from the angel that her cousin Elizabeth was with child. She met, went immediately, as it says, to her. And Elizabeth was in a town called Ancaran, which fortunately, Miss Gloria and I had the opportunity to visit and went to the Holy Land. And it's a beautiful town. It's not that far from Jerusalem. Um, about five miles or so, up, as it says, up in the hill country. And there's a beautiful church there, Church of the Visitation. And all around the church, in dozens of different languages, they have the Magnificat, which is what we just read, this wonderful prayer from Mary. But you know, when it says Mary went immediately there, it's not like, you know, she got in a car and drove. I mean, <laughs> Nazareth to Ankaran is about 90 miles, mm -hmm. right? So to put that in perspective, it's about, it's about like if you got up one morning and decided to walk to Mobile, okay? It would take you several days to get there. But it said, immediately she went there to be with her cousin. And of course, Elizabeth is overjoyed to see her. And... John the Baptist leaps in her womb. So it's a wonderful, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful scene and the, and the church is beautiful. But the thing that is so incredible about, about the Magnificat is it is such an unbelievable prayer. I mean, if you break it down into its parts, we have the first part where Mary rejoices in God and displays her humility. I think, think about that. Mary calls herself a lowly servant. My goodness. If she's a lowly servant, what are we? I mean, she's the most perfect creature ever made by God. Yet she looks upon herself as a lowly creature. And then we see what will be a, a theme throughout, really, Jesus' ministry, once he begins his public ministry, of this upside down view of the world right we have it talks about you know scattering the proud in their conceit you know raising up the lowly it, it just it just speaks to the generosity that god has for those who are faithful to him and then finally we have that last part where she really invokes the prophecy is being fulfilled. And it harkens to us that, that God is, is always faithful. God always keeps his word. God is always present for those who believe. So, as we come to the end of the Advent season, and we have prepared ourselves, hopefully, and made straight a path for God to our hearts. 
Take some time to reflect on this incredible prayer. Make sure that we are prepared with humility and we're prepared with the gratitude for the graces given to us from God. But more importantly, that we continue to trust, to trust in his benevolence, to trust in his graces, and to trust in his plan for our lives. We do that, my brothers and sisters, and we should be ready to receive with open arms the incarnation, God with us, Jesus Christ, born on Christmas Day. Oh,